Welcome to another edition of West Virginia Mountaineers Live, part of the voice of college football, and of course, hosted by the Ryan and Russ Show each and every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to this channel and anything else of the voice of college football. And at the conclusion of this broadcast, go on over to the Ryan and Russ Show and subscribe there and check out any other videos that we have done um, in the past. Uh, we actually did. We had our... Troy Tuning on today, our friend that we do the Big 12 College Experience with another channel to subscribe that we do as well um, as a Oklahoma State football fan. Did a little bit of behind enemy lines with him earlier, so check that out too. And we'll get into Oklahoma State. Um, but of course, Ryan, we got to uh, finish as we start every episode, kind of finish up last week's uh, a weird week last week. Not only was it played Thursday night, not only was it played against our former head coach in Dana Holgerson. Uh, but it was the weirdest of weird games I have ever seen, Ryan. Um, of course, the Hail Mary to end the game. But uh, unfortunately, shouldn't have even come down to that play. A lot of a lot of miscues, uh, players missing balls. Not, not the sharpest game by West Virginia, but of course, a game that we're looking to get back and get back on track against uh, Oklahoma State. What's up, Timothy Green? Um, not a game we we really want to talk about much much longer, Ryan. But a game that let's we probably should finish up because we need because that game and that momentum and a lot from last week will go into this game and and game planning. Um, any final notes from your side of things, Ryan? Yeah, we're on to OKC. Okay, Just kidding. <laughs> uh, well, we are. Yeah, I, un, unfortunately, kind of was kind of a predictable flat spot. Unfortunately, with. The first time being favored, expected to win, all the pressure on you. Dana was playing with house money, and they kind of played like it. I mean, they executed offensively, but defensively, they did not execute at a high enough clip to to win a road game. I mean, Donovan Smith didn't have an incompletion the whole second half. Uh, and then kind of the, some of the stuff that haunted Neil Brown during his first four years of Morgantown came back up, like the special teams woes and – being penalized more than we had. I mean, we almost had 100 yards of penalties. We gave up 200 yards in return yardage alone. Just a really sloppy, undisciplined game, which I don't think is a reflection of this team. I, I think that was out of character, and I think it's going to get fixed on Saturday. Well, I mean, I think it's something that we, we keep talking about, Ryan, is we are, because of this team and the way that it's built and our identity and our game plan and everything that goes into – West Virginia's success and what we've seen this season. What goes into that is there's not a lot of room for error, if really any and all. I think we no. saw the largest room for error was when we beat Texas Tech, but they beat us 2-0 in the turnover battle, but we had the weather to help us out on our side. Like That is the extent of, of, of what we can do. Um, I, I really think the play in that game was when, when the ball just hit Ander Anderson in the chest. And, and the interception happened is everyone wants to talk about the Hail Mary because I get that's what left the bad taste in our mouth. We finally got the lead back 12 seconds left. I get it. Um, and, you know, we're not blaming Garrett Green uh, with the, you got to know better than to take your helmet off. But of course, he's the one that kept us in the game. I mean, yeah. he threw. I mean, you you take away that bad the the interception play that I was just talking about the ball hitting him in the chest. His stats are even better. I mean, we're talking maybe over 400 yards at that point. Uh, so yeah, it, it, you know, rookie mistake there, but that's, that's not that, that that's not what decided this game by, by yeah. any means. I mean, you still had a Hail Mary play to figure things out. You still had special teams to figure things out. It's just, just a lot of inconsistency across football and, and across all sides of the ball. And when the defense has just been playing so well, and I get it, you're going to have those games where. Maybe the unit you heavily rely on can't always step up and take control there. And so they have to – I'm fine with that game relying on the offense. It's kind of what we expected, Ryan. But you got to – you got to – you can't let the guys run in wild either. I mean, you got to have Donovan Smith have an incompletion in the second half. It's – it's The best it, defense was an incomplete pass. I mean, uh, pass interference. Like, yeah, that was the only, only time we yards. stopped them. It, I mean – you're, yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah, the defense was not sharp. Um, 
But, I mean, you, you got to get the stop when it matters, too, as well. I mean, you got to bat that ball down on the Hail Mary. But you are right. I mean, it shouldn't have come to that. You can't give up a kick return when when the defense actually was playing well, too. Like, the defense was all right the first 10 minutes of the game, and then we give them a, a momentum-changing kick return. And let's be honest, too. They could have ran back two more. They had one called back mm-hmm. that they did run back, and the other one, they got the guy got tripped up. So, yeah, just it, it, by far the sloppiest game of the year. I mean, Penn State, when we lost, it was, hey, man, we lost Penn State. They're arguably the best team in the country. We'll find out on Saturday when they finally play Ohio State. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was by far the sloppiest game of the year, unfortunately. Yeah, and, I mean, I think the 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 glass half full way to look at it is, right, we, we've prided ourselves, we pride our show, and it's never as bad as it seems. It's never as good as it seems. So kind of going glass half full here is your two losses are, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what this Penn State team is. I think they're around sixth or seventh right now. And the AP poll, I mean, we we believe they could get all the way up to fourth. I kind of been saying like I, they they feel like a playoff team this year. And so one of the losses being that to start the season in Happy Valley, okay, and then you lose a game against a head coach that has circled this one and made it his personal Super Bowl yeah. in, in that fashion. I mean, you're you're still fun. Like we're still ready to to we're we're still on track. It's just this Oklahoma State now. There's just not room for. I mean, we see it in the game level, but we also see it now in the season level. There's just not really much room for error left. Um, and so we we got to get this one against Oklahoma State. And right now, uh, I know, uh, I think it's ESPN, FPI, because we know how great they do. Oh, uh, they're they're powering. Yeah, there's there's a reason, right, right, where they all the casinos keep those on while you're placing sports bets because they want you to look at that. But we'll we'll take it for what it is. Uh, They have us favored in four games to this point. Um, I think that's Oklahoma State, BYU, Baylor. That one's the road game. And then Cincinnati. And then the two were underdogs is at UCF um, and at Oklahoma. So, I mean, hey, that's – I mean, if if, if we've been talking about eight, nine wins this season. I mean, that's the formula right there. And you definitely need to get one that maybe you shouldn't have gotten. Maybe that's this weekend against Gundy, OK State. We'll we'll shift the conversation there in a second. And but. Hey, maybe it's the, that at UCF game. Um, that's especially with Plumlee coming back and playing against Oklahoma uh, coming up this week. Really curious about that game and, and watching him. I think that game's at noon, right, Ryan? Before we're at three uh, thirty. Let me check here. Yes, yes that game's at yes, noon. So yes, we'll have yep, the ability yep, to yep. see how well um, UCF is and Plumlee is before we play him next week. But it, it I mean, the formula is still there. It, it's not panic time. But but it, it goes into Oklahoma State, and I think something good and beneficial about this game, similar to that Texas Tech game, is it's supposed to be another gross day in, in Morgantown, and you have Oklahoma State coming off of two emotional wins, basically against the state of Kansas and Kansas State and Kansas um, in, in, in Stillwater. They have to, after this, they go back home for two more games against Cincinnati uh, and then the last round of Bedlam. So if there is a game in the formula that this works out for West Virginia, th- this is the game, Ryan. Yeah, sandwich spot, as we like to yep. call it uh, Call it on our uh, what Big 12 College Experience show that we give out picks every single week for the whole Big 12. So go check out that show. And, of course, go check out the Ryan and Russ show where we'll break down the entire game at length. We had an Oklahoma State guest on our buddy Troy Tuning from the Big 12 College Experience. So everything intertwining, Cowboys, Mountaineers. It's it's going to be a fun game. I, I'm looking forward to the bad weather. I mean, I, I it's my kind of weather, football weather. Um, this team should play well. I think they're going to be able to run the football against Oklahoma State. Um, and a lot of it, they're going to have to run the ball because the weather's going to be bad. Yeah, and I think that's, like I said, making some Texas Tech. And I think this is that game where we are waiting for it against Houston at didn't well it happened against us um but we're, we're waiting to win that turnover battle game again and i think i think this has the makings for that we we, we need to because eventually this stuff has to start going around someone's going to need to catch the ball exactly right i don't care if you're an offense defense special gotta catch the ball is i i, I know 
you know, I know it's the ridiculous. Cons- I know, I know. There's the concern about Neil Brown kind of falling back into Neil Brown ways. I know there's the concern about his coaching. I think he's been great this year. Been very supportive in Neil Brown. Actually, really happy with the job he's done. And I, uh, by no means, do I or I don't think we hold that Houston game against him. Yeah, there were concerns maybe buttoning up at the end there, but he literally can't go out and catch the ball himself. Yeah. So we'll we'll definitely defend him on that mark, but. Someone's gonna someone has to do something this weekend because we cannot keep going through these games and not have the turnover battle in our favor. Yeah, the margin of error, like you talked about, we 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 aren't just gonna line up and beat a team because we have better players. That's not that's not the construction nope. of this roster. Our 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 roster is constructed nicely to fit our strengths, the offensive line. Uh, running the football, playing complimentary football, which I think we can start doing now with the running game with Garrett Green, uh, proving he can get some of these guys, these receivers involved. But on the defensive side, it's been a good unit. I know they had a bad, bad outing at Houston. Like you said, it's going to happen. But biggest bone to pick, man, we got to catch the ball outside of pit. We haven't caught the ball at all. And we've had plenty of chances. Beanie Bishop's dropped about seven this year. I didn't even hear his name against Houston. I, he was I, on the I, field every play. I, I know. I, I just, too. yeah, it's, it was tough game. It's tough game. Well, let, let's, I think we need to do as Neil Brown said, like we got to just flush that one out and move forward. We basically have, but we, we needed to have a few more notes to talk over it. So now moving on to this Oklahoma state and we already kind of started this conversation as well is I think Remac and Milam are back this game, Ryan. Yep. I, I think huge. Burke's back too, which I think that that might be the X factor on defense. I, I think we're showing it showed how much Burke's really the, the preseason grades he was getting. We see why he got such high honors because of the very reason we saw against Houston. Yeah. Uh, Neil Brown on the injuries earlier in the week. Uh, Burks is back at practice. He was limited. Um, Remack, I think, is actually going to miss one more game. But I think my I think Milam's back. We need to have someone because that's why we got some of those holding penalties. Yeah, and we couldn't run the ball uh, that effective too because we were predictable and running to the right side because um, we our whole left side was was banged up. So yeah, getting those guys back is a must. And yeah, Aubrey Burks. I, I think we realize how important he is to this defense. I know a lot of people were like, maybe we're better without him. I don't think so. I think we got that answer quick. I don't know why people would say that. Yeah. You know, uh, people I, get caught up in the moment. A couple oh, guys better. make the plays when Burks goes down, but I mean, there's a reason they're the second string. They can come in, do, do a job for a couple, a couple times, but overall you want your horses out there and, and, and your veterans. So yes. Um, much needed. Got to get those guys back. And it's going to be a physical game, too, on Saturday. Oklahoma State is playing well, and they're they're running the you-know-what out of the football, too. So yeah, they are. It, it's kind of mirror images of one another where both teams want to establish a line of scrimmage, and whichever team does so is going to win the game. And we know with Bowman, too, he's really caught on fire recently. Yeah. Uh, Gundy yep. started with this nice three-quarterback system. Um, Including that, his son. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. And uh, the typical, if you don't, they they say if you if you have two quarterbacks you have no quarterbacks. I don't know what it means when you have three quarterbacks. You really, but then Bowman steps up and he's looking great. But I definitely think with the weather, is is if you play and sell out on the run on defense, is I, I mean I'm I'm not underestimating Bowman, but I'm also making him carve me up on using the weather to our advantage and and make him all right. You've done it two games. Let's see how you do it on on the road in Gross Morgantown under the rain. I mean, to go back, I remember being at this game. We saw Mason Rudolph do it. Um, that was a disgusting. I think that was like a fifty to thirty nine game. That was one of the. That was a ridiculous uh, yeah. game. Uh, but I obviously I don't think we're gonna see that again. Um, this Saturday, I'll lose my mind if we do it. At least if we do, it better be West Virginia fifty. Uh, but I I I just. With the sandwich spot we're talking about, with with the way, like everything plays into West Virginia's advantage. It's just the the big question we have going into this game, Ryan, is have we shaken have we shaken the 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 distaste out of our mouth um, from that Houston game? And I think we've had extra time to rest and 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 move on from that. So it, it it's going to be interesting to see. And, uh, we got wet blanket here. Bowman is a good at Dink and Doe. Bowman is 2-0 against WU. 
Yeah, he is. Yeah, he, he he's done well against us. Uh, but I definitely think, he, I mean, he's been slinging the ball though, Ryan. Like yeah. he's been, he looked like, wow, where did this pocket passer come from type? Um, but this, this is a game. I, I hope this isn't this. Well, I think we're gonna, just going to miss him in general because of how good he is. But I really hope this isn't a, a, a Lathan game where we're like, oh man, if we had Lathan for this game, really yeah, no, need Cutter I'm to step up. Uh, on Saturday, you mentioned Bowman was 28 of 41 for 336 uh, against K State, uh, threw for two, 235 yards, almost 300 against Iowa State. Ever since they fully committed to him, he's really, I mean, he's really playing at a high level in, in, since, since they finally committed to him. Uh, Wet Blanket does make a good point. He is 2 and 0 um, against the Mountaineers. The last time he started, I believe. I forget what year is 2018. I want to say, I mean, he's been in college forever. Mm. So yeah. Um, I'd have to go back and look. I, he didn't start last year. That was Morden. I actually think he's only one and oh, to be honest. So it might've um, been 2020 when he was at Texas tech, 2020, 2019. Cause Neil beat in Texas tech. Yeah. So it must've been uh, 19, 20. He didn't he has, start. You know. He didn't start the West Virginia game though. He didn't start that game. I think he had COVID. The COVID year, I think he was out with COVID. So, yeah, I'd I'd have to I'd have to deep dive. I only think he's one and zero. So, um, but yeah, he's been in college since about the Brandon Whedon era. So, <laughs> so this is this is kind of a narrative too. Uh, we lost to Texas Tech four times in a row. We snapped that. Gundy's won four in a row here in Morgantown. It's it's time mm-hmm. to snap that streak. Uh, Bowman obviously has had some success against us. Time to snap that streak. So this is another snap the streak type of game where you, it's easy to get up for a game like this. You just played your worst game of the year by far. It's well, that's why we bounce. lost to Houston, right? Yeah, there was no streak. Yeah, no, we never played each other. We got to we got to snap yeah. the streak. So we'll beat them next year. Well, <laughs> and Oklahoma State played their best game on Saturday. I think we or bat, arguably they played their best football the last two weeks. So. I think they are due for a little bit of regression, and it's a good spot for the Mountaineers on Saturday. But it's all going to start up front in the trenches. I think between our last – besides last year, and we know kind of how that um, ended, of course. I still laugh at last year sometimes. Like, if you would have told me, oh, you got – like, just to start the season, you pick three random opponents, and they were like, you're going to be – you just pick them out of a hat. You're going to be Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and Baylor. I'm like, oh, damn. We're going to win the Big 12 last year, yeah. of course. Obviously. Or at least win eight games. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We're going to go nine and three. Uh, but yeah, obviously last year kind of ended the season. I know Oklahoma State still made a bowl and that they ended up losing to Wisconsin too. But that was that was a gross game. That was a gross game. I feel like it's always raining when we play these guys. And then before that, it was 2014. I think they went on like a seven-game win streak against us. It didn't matter if it was – I remember them upsetting – um, I think we were 12th in the country and they w- with Skylar Howard. And I think they, they're the ones that snapped that they've, they've and always been Will there. Greer. To, Will Greer, the, he runs it in, does the famous horns down play um, that they called it after, of course, the Texas game, when he ran it in for two, we did the same play against Oklahoma State. they came down and dry. it's, this is, this is definitely the thorn. In we the need side. this one. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, oh. this is Texas tech all over again. This is the new tech. I like that. Even though yeah. we won last year, I kind of like that. This is like the new Texas tech is we have these games where it's, it, well, I mean, speaking of it, and we'll get to the other, the other around the big 12 here in a little bit that we usually do, but we kind of saw it uh, last week with BYU and TCU. There's always that one team that just, just always bothers you. And obviously, obviously BYU and TCU have that history, but going the back to the mountain West. So it's the same thing there. They're the, Oklahoma State, I mean, Gundy, he, he gets up for the games he needs to get up for. So, yeah, always great coach, always done a good job. Yeah, no, it's everybody counting him out, and there he is, two and one, or yeah, two and one in Big 12 play, controls his destiny to get to Dallas. I mean, the, the winner of this game, too, and we'll dive into the Big 12 scenarios, is going to have an inside track, really going to control their destiny going down the stretch of trying to get to Dallas. Oklahoma and Texas, they were on bye weeks. They're back this week. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's this is this is going to be a physical game with both teams at a high high uh, high urgency. They both need this game really, really bad. So, it's uh, looking for looking forward to this game on, on Saturday. Rush. 
so kind of going over the standings because I want to kind of project out because we're very favorable. We really like uh, where West Virginia stands um, scheduling wise. Obviously, we got a tough one against Oklahoma. So right now, uh, we have obviously Oklahoma leading no Big Twelve losses. Uh, there's a couple teams that still need to do their buys. I think it's, I think it's Iowa and Kansas this week, and then I think it's TCU and Kansas State next week, and then we're done with the buys for the last month of the yes. season. I think yep. that's right. Um, and then. Yeah, and then you look at the the one loss teams: Oklahoma State, Texas, Kansas State, West Virginia, and then the two loss teams: Kansas, TCU, Texas Tech, BYU, Houston, Baylor, and then of course the the zero and three teams are the three loss teams in UCF and and Cincinnati. And we all know the deal with UCF that isn't a true reflection of. Actually, you could kind of make a case for both zero and three teams. There is one the. The quarterbacks messed up both of them is in terms of Plumlee being hurt for UCF and then Cincinnati still being an incredible team. And then Emory Jones loves to throw his uh, red zone picks or fumble the ball there too. So uh, the quarterback causing a little trouble for for both those teams, but definitely teams not to take lightly, even though they haven't gotten their big 12 wins yet. Well, like even their first big 12 wins. But Ryan, kind of going into the schedule is let's look at the teams that, that are you know around us or above us. Uh, Iowa State. Three and one right now. Don't play them. Uh, Kansas State. Don't play them. Uh, Kansas. Two losses, but I mean they're they're good at any time. And I mean we we have our concerns with Jalen Daniels if there's something issues going on there. Uh, but they're right behind us, so we don't have to worry about playing them. And then of course Texas. You know we're not playing Texas either. And the two teams you know kind of behind us a little bit in the rear views TCU and Texas Tech that we'll have the tiebreaker against. So we're we're in a great position here, Ryan. And then at, after this game at UCF, BYU, Oklahoma's the big one, Cincinnati, Baylor, like we talked about to start this episode, we're projected. We don't put a lot of faith in these ESPN FPI projections by any means, but I mean, that's four and two is, I actually kind of agree with that. Is that, that sounds right. Yeah. I, and I, I'm doing the math in my head right now. The teams that they miss, the four teams are combined. Nine, ten, and five, ten and five. I mean, in Big Twelve play, they're four easily top half of the league team. So, and you and you look at at the bottom feeders: BYU, Houston, Baylor, UCF, Cincinnati. I know uh, since our Houston's only wins against us, but I think you put an asterisk next to that too. It's that was the Dana Holgerson Super Bowl. Spot, if if but. another coach is coaching Houston, we'd be like, that's not a. That's yeah. not a a that's that's yeah. the exception, not the rule. If you had correct, yeah. yeah. If you had someone, else, I just it's, yeah. I I mean, you couldn't have. Had, and Oklahoma State's got the same deal. That's why this game is so pivotal on Saturday, where each team's gonna ha- have a nice nice path to Dallas. And and we, and we'll talk about Oklahoma and Texas here in a minute. They are going to lose a couple games uh, down the stretch. They're not going to go undefeated. They're not that good. I mean, they're good football teams, but they're not elite football teams. Uh, UCF is going to give Oklahoma a game this weekend. I Plumlee off the bye. UCF finally got healthy. Oklahoma's coming off the Red River rivalry. That is going to be a f- good football game on Saturday. And I know Oklahoma fans are already chalking it up as a W. You don't do that in college football. So I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, like you said, right before we kick off at 3.30. So UCF at Oklahoma, like you said, Another thing I want to bring up to actually, it would be gr- it'd be great if UCF can figure that one out, especially with Plumlee, especially if Oklahoma is underrating them a bit. Um, because I want to share something too here, Ryan. We get to week ten. This is when we play BYU, uh, November fourth, and then Oklahoma is at Oklahoma State. Yep. So, and then we have yep. we have Oklahoma after Bedlam. Yep. That could be a yep. letdown spot. Like even, even when we play Oklahoma, it could be a letdown spot. Even when we play the concerns of the UCF, that could be a letdown game for them. This schedule is I really see this game this Saturday is if you can get this domino to fall, I think we're gonna have another, you know, just slew of dominoes just fall down. It's kind of like you lose to Penn State, and then you win what four in a row, and then you lose to Houston, and then you win four or five in a row again. Like this, that could very well happen. Sometimes Obviously, we don't want to lose. We don't want to lose to our former coach, and we don't want to lose the way that we did lose. But Ryan, you you know, you worked for Hugs. You worked in college basketball. You saw it where sometimes before March Madness or before that conference basketball tournament, is you kind of get that last season unexpected loss. That's like, 
oh, we don't want to feel this again. Like this is the thing to get us going. And yeah, that, that's what this could be, especially when it's like it even shouldn't be a loss. Like, so even when you played at just just so bad, and you were you were up four with twelve seconds left in the game, and with how bad you played, so yeah, and, and it kind of like to go back to the Will Greer year. I know it ended kind of disappointing the last two games, but they were nine and one, and the one loss was in Ames on on a Saturday night game where. They just didn't play well. They lost no. a turnover battle, had a field goal block. Weird things happened, just like they did at the Houston game. Um, I mean, West Virginia fans remember the famous 07 team. Obviously, that ended poorly, too, with, with the pick game. But they lost that South Florida game about this point, game five or six. And it was a wake-up call, and, and they they ran the table after that. So that, that very well could happen. This team still... Went on the road to TCU, got a win. TCU's not a fraud. We, we we we've seen that over and over again. They beat Texas Tech. They grinded it out against Pitt. And I mean, this team had been playing as good as anybody. The bye week probably did not come at the right time in terms of being hot. It did. It, it didn't help our injury report because all those guys ended up being out again. But uh, yeah, man, I I I expect this team to play well down the stretch. They're veterans. What do you think? the expectations are for this team. And I don't mean that. So add a little bit of your fan bias in it and add a little bit about like what you know about this team and what's left where it's, you know, we started this season and we're like, Hey, let's, if we can just get to eight and four, if we can just get to yeah. nine and three. And now with the conversation, the way things have lined up shifted to, Hey, maybe we can get to Dallas. What is your, I don't even want to do floor to ceiling, but what's your, what's your good kind of line in between that? What, what eight and, and four, eight and four, any, I, do you think nine and three? Definitely think hard. Nine and three. One more yeah. loss. I mean, it, it, it's going to be hard, but I think, I think that group thinks that they, they have a good enough team to get to Dallas. I really think that they, that's their expectation, yeah. especially with the schedule. I know they just gave one away on the schedule that we keep talking about, but that, you're probably not going to get – I'll take my chances that we don't give two away on that schedule. You, we were always going to give one away. I mean, especially yeah. with the way that we were winning, grinding it out in a crazy game against TCU, grinding out a crazy game against Texas Tech and Pitt. So, I mean, we were bound to give one back. I don't think we're going to give another one back against a mediocre team is, is, is the right term. Yeah, I think, that, I think that's fair. And I think two losses in the Big 12 – Watch this. I'll, I'll, no, it definitely gives you a chance. I'll tell you the. I'll tell you the West Virginia, just typical West Virginia result. We're gonna we're gonna have two losses in the Big Twelve and be tied with three other teams and lose the tiebreaker or something. Or we'll go Texas, head to Oklahoma. Or we'll go head to head against like a Kansas State or something, and they'll watch. But anyway, I mean that's a great season though, and there's nothing you can do about it at that point. Because here's the here's the reverse side of this too, is I can see what the narrative's going to be if, if that happens. The narrative's going to be. Hey, you know, we ended up tying for second place. We lost the tiebreaker, and now we can't go to Dallas. We should have won that Houston game. And, okay, I get yeah. that. I, I get that narrative. But here's the problem to that. Because here, here's my prediction, what I think is going to happen. And I think this is either going to happen in one or th one of these, these three games. It's going to happen against – I guess it could technically happen to anyone. But my prediction is going to happen this weekend. It's going to happen the following weekend, or it's going to happen at Oklahoma. You're going to win one of those games, and you should not have won. So I, it's going to even out. Like you could argue TCU, they should have lost. Yeah, you could, but I, I but no, no, no. I, I think TCU's you could have lost. I think the yeah. same thing with Texas. Well, Texas Tech, we we dominated that game. We we definitely that was the right result of that game. I ignore the turnover battle, but. Uh, I, I think TCU could have lost. I, I don't think it was a should have lost because even though TCU got up and stuff, I mean, shut them out in the second half. Like it's, it's, we, yeah. we, 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 we had that game like, and we've always done well in Fort Worth. I'm talking about like, Ooh, we had no business winning that game. That that's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I, I think we're going to be due for one of those. And, that, and that's how this Houston time, game. <laughs> In, in a way, it, it almost it almost was a Houston game because they were down eleven with four minutes in it. I mean, the yeah, odds, but it shouldn't that, even got to that. I mean, we can yeah. go around in that. But, but I, I I agree with you though. Yeah. They are gonna win. They're gonna win. Uh, 
They're going to win a messed up game. I, I think it's going to be Oklahoma. That's the one I think it's going to be. I think that's the one they're going to pull out of you, you know what, and, and find a way to win in Norman this year. Um, yeah, I mean, possible. We saw Garrett Green two years ago do some. I mean, they they never were trailing the whole game till the very end. And I mean, if it was, I think that was actually Zach Frazier that snapped it. Um, over it was, was it was yeah. the the mix up. And, False start. Yeah, and 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 sort of that. Uh. Chad Atkins, why do West Virginia fans have to watch five years of the same thing? Excuses for losses in games that we should have won. Um, I mean, I, it's just, it's football. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's excuses. It's yeah, just reality that it, it's a competitive game. And you, you got two teams that are, I kept saying all week, the talent discrepancy was not what everybody was making it out to be. Houston's got some players. And they're, they got a good quarterback, and they had a good football coach. Their football coach is the second all-time winningest coach in our program history. So, I mean, you knew Dana was going to have those guys ready. It's just they they didn't get enough stops down the stretch. And, yeah, they, they probably should have won. But if you, if you get outplayed in two out of three phases, it's hard to win on the road. I think you can call out bad play, too. And, yeah, maybe yeah. we can use the shoulda, coulda stuff. And I get the – you, the, no excuses. You went at the end of the day, but I don't think we're making excuses either. I mean, the ball hits you right in the chest when you're standing in the end zone and it goes to the defender yeah. for an interception catch the Like it's just, it, it, it's, it, yeah, it's, we're not even blaming the refs and we could go down that road from that game, but just, it, it is what it is. I think it's more of a things even out. So, uh, Mike King, their secondary is over six feet tall, about 62. So I'm guessing that's six foot two on the average. And they can all run, yeah, they can. But we can run too, and we can we can get physical with our lines. I mean, we saw that. I mean, Texas Tech, they had bodies, they had big guys too. And sometimes we see that in the secondary where the bigger bodies aren't necessarily an advantage because sometimes you get to that far in the field and it's low man wins if you can't yeah. get low enough or time it up right. So, um, and, and Mike King, good question here. Zach Frazier against their nose guard, uh, Justin Kirkland, I believe it's his last name. He's good. He's good. But I mean, Frazier's Frazier moved the guys at Penn State. Those guys are first and second round, second round picks. I expect Zach Frazier to win his matchup. I he's won every matchup so far this year. I continue. I continue to think he will win every matchup. I mean. TCU, he was kicking TCU's ass so bad that they started holding him from blocking them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they've already said Zach Frazier's ready for the NFL. It, no doubt. Yeah, he, he's, he's a beast. Go. Uh, Chad Ak Atkins asks again, on the last play of the game, why do we not have the four best pass rushers in the game? Even Brown said they should have four to five man pressure. We're asking the same. We're asking a lot of things about that last play, Chad. It's, yeah. That's that's where we put a little blame on Neil Brown. I mean, you can well, and there was a blatant hold. Like on, I'm not blaming the rest. Like I said, we've said this should not should have come down to the last play in in any sense of it. But there there was a blatant hold there too. Uh, the other thing, I they couldn't sub because uh, Houston went hurry up on in between the last two plays. So they, they they weren't able to sub because Houston did not sub, but they should have had the right personnel from the first play because it was two plays. It was out of bounds and then right to the ball for the Hail Mary. They didn't give West Virginia a chance to sub. I'm trying to remember when Dana called a timeout. When did he use his last timeout? It wasn't for the Hail Mary. It, it was uh, – I forget when he called it. it. It was on the defensive side. It was on the defensive side. It might have been. Yeah. yeah. Oh, maybe was this, was it that fourth and ten? Yes, I believe. Yeah, it was. Yeah, to set their defense, and I mean, it came quick. The 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 hail mary. It was like they crappy uh crappy kickoff. They they got good field position again, and then they got a quick hit out of bounds right to the ball. Hail mary. They win. I. What do you think the solution is? For, I don't think our kicker can get to the back of the end zone. And I'm telling you what, I'm tired of watching these guys try to. I would rather like, okay, they start at the 25. Okay. Like it's it's getting to that point. I, I would do Kicking we out of bounds. <laughs> start at the 35. Yeah. yeah. I I guess done get, that on the last possession. Yeah, but you got to get it past it. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a tough one, man. It's it's special teams, dude. It's yeah. keeps you up at night. At least keeps me up at night. I was up all night that following night. But yeah, all right, Ryan, let's do a little around the Big Twelve, catch everyone up, and then uh, we will call it a night. Um, what what is your uh, coming up this weekend, Ryan? Um, some big important matchups. What besides obviously West Virginia, Oklahoma State, that'll tell us a lot. What's another matchup where I'm not saying it's definitely necessarily the best matchup, the best team, but what is the matchup other than us that's like going to tell you a lot in terms of Dallas? TCU, K State, uh, oh, the two the teams that were yeah. the two teams that were in Dallas. Uh, K State's got one loss, big win. Avery Johnson took over, lightning in a bottle, five rushing touchdowns. That's not a typo. Five rushing touchdowns for a quarterback. That was an impressive debut, and he didn't start. So this is his first career start. Hoover, on the other side, uh, lit up BYU, four passing touchdowns. Let's see how he does in his first career road spot in uh, in uh, the Little Apple. So two young quarterbacks taking over good programs in a rematch of what was a classic last year in Dallas, and this one is the 7 o'clock ESPN primetime slot. So really looking forward to that matchup. Yeah, I think Texas Tech BYU is going to be fascinating. I definitely agree with you. Yeah. That that's ahead. That's that's probably of the looking at the Big Twelve at a whole the whole as a whole. Pardon me. The the one that's the the Kansas State TCU is going to tell us the most in terms of because the winner of that team, right? We're going to all be like, oh, a couple of weeks ago, those guys were dead, and it's like we're going to get to the end of the season, like, oh crap, they're still here. Yeah. Like yeah. that that's what that game is, but. I'm curious in terms of of I guess the two loss matchup the the Texas Tech BYU is I think this is going to be the game um, the quitters game is after this game the other team's probably going to be like we're, we're done and I actually I could see that leaning more Texas Tech I think Texas Tech's a better team than, than BYU well especially with BYU and all their injuries BYU is not a bad team that's another they just kind of got the short end of the stick and they don't really have a running game. But everything else is, I mean, Slovis is, as much as I hate to say it, because of obviously the team he played on last year, I mean, that Kansas game, he looked incredible. Obviously, TCU, he didn't look good. And like I told people is that TCU-BYU game, just throw it out in terms of BYU. Don't hold that against them. I've seen that a million times when they were in the Mountain West. It's just one of those, you you you, you throw it out. You take TC, Timothy, you'll take TCU in the Kansas State one. Yeah, that's interesting. Because I, what do you think, Ryan, is... Do you think Avery John, like if you're able to stop him from running, can he, do you think he can throw the ball? No, I, that's what I texted you last weekend. I said, man, yeah. I don't know why they're benching Will Howard. This guy can't throw. He can't read a defense. Boy, I, I didn't realize he had the, that kind of speed and, and agility. I mean, he, he ran all over Texas tech, but also that game kind of got away from Texas tech where turnovers led sure. to short fields and they kind of quit. They kind of, they had some quit in them last week. Definitely uh, the off season front runners is what Texas tech has turned into. And we said that, like we've mentioned it, that if you're, Hey, I mean, Texas is an example of this, right? Is, is we keep, when we hear all off season or off season, like, Oh, watch out for this team. And this team hasn't really proven anything. I guess Texas tech, what they went eight and four last year. I mean, they, they did decent, but it's not like they were, it's not like they were TCU or can't like actually in the yeah. big 12 championship. Like you need to show a little bit of a track record. And this is, I guess, a message for the national media before you start being like, Oh, Texas tech, it's their year. And it's like, no, it's, it's it, show me something first and coming out, losing to Wyoming. I mean, Hey, I kind of fell for it with Baylor a little bit. Well, I guess Baylor wasn't talked about a lot this off season, but I mean, I thought Aranda was, going to get yeah. things moving a little more than he has he might be in trouble by the way i know that's that's a tangent on but going back to what i was saying in terms of the texas tech byu game is just curious how how both those teams are going to come out in that game especially being at byu texas tech's had experience as we brought up with wyoming them starting the season against wyoming and playing in the mountains um with elevation and stuff i don't know if that helps them or they're like oh crap we got to go back and, and deflates them I, I think that is – it's the reverse TCU-Kansas State game. It's it's the who still has the fire in them game. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm looking forward to that one, especially in Provo. Kind of lean to the Cougs as well. I'm going to tell everybody right now, and everybody's going to call me crazy. UCF is going into Norman, and that is going to be a 
good football game. That is not going to be a blowout. I know the number's 19. Jeff Levy, former UCF offensive coordinator. Dylan Gabriel, former UCF quarterback. A lot of familiarity on the Lower two event. staffs. Uh, UCF gets Ry- John Rice Plumley back. Oklahoma can be had on the ground. Oklahoma- UCF was rolling on the ground before Plumley went down. Off the bye, they're as healthy as they've been. That's going to be a one-possession game in the fourth quarter. That's my prediction. And I think UCF has a chance to go in and shock the world. I really hey, do. from West Virginia's side, that's what we want. And we, it's a letdown it. coming off the bye week. They're still talking about the Texas win. <laughs> yeah, they are. I mean, in the schedule, I mean, here, let's let's spend a little time on on the the, the, the SEC front runners. Oklahoma, okay, so they're out of, the, out of the bye. We say they play UCF. They're at Kansas, at Bedlam. West Virginia comes to town at BYU. Oklahoma's going to lose that game. I'll tell you right now. They're going to lose at BYU. Um, and then versus TCU. And, like, what do we say about TCU? The Oklahoma may come to that game against TCU and be like, oh, crap. You know, we're – they're still here. Oklahoma finishes 9-3. and three. I, I I like that. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's, let's take a little peek on everyone's favorite, Horns Down Texas, um, especially you, Ryan. So coming off yeah. the bye at Houston this week. Yeah, they're going to win that one versus BYU. Hey, 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 who's got a winning record against the Texas Longhorns? <laughs> they do, but Dana already had his Super Bowl. It's hard to I, – I, I agree. I, I know what you're saying. I think he spent everything he had on what we saw. It, it, but it, well, this I'm one's actual university. Be this one's a university Super Bowl. Yeah. Because well, Texas kept them out of the Big 12 for no, all these I, years. No, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I just – I just think if if West Virginia didn't play the, them the week before, then maybe I guess they do get a little. Well, Texas coming off the bye too, so they have more extended rest. But I'll tell you the one after that, BYU. I don't mean to keep bringing up BYU, but this is kind of what BYU does. They 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 lose the games they probably shouldn't lose or those, those close ones, but then they come out and who you want to talk about the revenge angle? Who's BYU's former quarterback, Steve Sarkeesian? Yep. So yep. there there's something to that versus Kansas State. At TCU, at Iowa State, Texas Tech. Three losses. Easily. That easily. Maybe three more. Well, that's what I'm saying is yeah. I, I think we're talking about four losses total. At least two more. Three right it, there. It, and where'd those where balloons these, come from? I don't know where those balloons I, I came think from. I think I think a ghost is excited that Texas what is gonna the lose heck so was that? Uh, everyone's celebrating the I the, think people <laughs> people was. don't realize how long the college football season is. They don't oh, like it, yeah. it's a marathon, man. Like these teams wear down injuries. Um and, and, and Texas and Oklahoma, the pressure of playing in the Big 12 one last time, getting everybody's best shot. They've, yeah, they, they've done a good job. It's only been three games in the Big 12. They got six more rounds of this fight. I think they're both going to stumble multiple times. How did those balloons go off? That's I don't what know I, where I, that came from. I, they were so, well, there was a celebration. There must be a, uh, when Texas lose four more times, that was the, that was the take. The stream yeah, yard or whoever's weird. behind all this agrees with us. Something or someone or something. Good old AI yeah. agrees with us. I mean, They're saying get out of here. <laughs> yeah, get out of here. But hey, we're we're about in terms of the Big Twelve schedule. We're we're about halfway done, Ryan. No, yep. this next week around that halfway point, and we still we got still got the latter half of the season, especially the last month. Uh, it's it's not only do we have Bedlam, but it's it's going to be the definition of Bedlam in in the Big Twelve, and it's another another rivalry that's terrible. That's that's leaving this conference, but uh, yeah. gives Gundy all the motivation uh, to win that one. Well, not this weekend, but we're definitely cheering for him that weekend, Ryan. No, no doubt. No doubt. So uh, what do we got now? Tomorrow we got everybody over at the Ryan and Russ show. Um, come join us for our keys to victory and game prediction. So five fifteen over at the Ryan and Russ show, get in there, get in the chat. We'll answer some questions as well. So yeah, full uh, exciting one tomorrow. The weekend's here, man. The weekend is here, and life is good. We love you all. Have a great Wednesday night. Hump day is officially almost over, and we're cruising right into this weekend and picking up a nice West Virginia win in Morgantown. Let's go Mountaineers. Go Mountaineers. See you guys tomorrow.